Hey guys, Zot here. I, myself, like a few others, like to gain that edge when it comes to PvP. Well, to do this, there are some daily and weekly chores that need to be done. And with the release of 8.3, there is now even more to do. The cap on a Heart of Azeroth has been removed, and a new Minor Essence slot has been added at level 75. With the gear cap also being increased, you're going to now need level 80 to get that extra 5 item levels on your Azerite pieces, and on top of that an extra 3% stamina. To kick this off, let's cover what you should be looking to do daily. Starting off, we've got everybody's favourite, the Daily AP Swoop. Simply go around Kol Tiras, Zandalar, Najjatar and any war fronts that you currently hold and complete any daily quest that rewards artifact power. Every day you also gain a new emissary. Completing these also rewards you with some more bonus AP. Now let's get to the newer stuff. Every day there is a mini vision of Nazoth located either in Oldham or Vale of Eternal Blossoms. Outside the entrance to this mini vision you'll find a daily quest. Pick this up, go inside and complete the objective. This is your main source of coalescing visions, a currency you'll need to complete horrific visions which we cover later in this video. The first completion of the week will also reward you with double the coalescing visions and a breath of everlasting spirit used to create rank 2 of the breath of the dying or spirit of preservation essence, two very good essences for pvp. Now these two essences are going to be very strong and a must have for most healers and all DPS for PvP, mainly as minor essences. And to unlock rank 3, you're going to need to get exalted with the two new factions, the Rajani and the Oldham Accord. Damage dealers are going to need Oldham Accord exalted, which can be reached by doing the daily quests and events inside of Oldham, each rewarding reputation and some coalescing visions, whereas healers will need Rajani exalted, which can be done by doing the daily quests inside of Veil of Eternal Blossoms as well as again the event. Okay then, so on top of the daily chores, every week there is some more things that you should be looking to do. First, and something you'll more than likely do naturally, is to get your PvP cap done for the week. This rewards the same as last season, a large amount of AP and gear all the way up to 475 eye level at 2.4 rating. A weekly Mythic Plus is also very important to do, Reward in Residuum to purchase high level Azerite pieces, a 475 eye level piece and a large chunk of AP once again. It's worth noting as the new season started, the max level key you now need to clear each week is a 15, up from a 10. On top of that, capping island expeditions once per week is a great chunk of easy to get artifact power with a 3.5k reward at the end and the extra chance of a mission giving the same amount. Now let's talk about the new additions to your weekly routine. Starting on the 21st of January for North America and the 22nd for Europe, the new raid Nyalofa The Waking City is released on Heroic and Normal mode, dropping 445 eye level on Normal and 460 on Heroic, with of course the chance of the items being corrupted with Mythic being released the week after, dropping baseline 475 gear. Not to mention some of the trinkets from the new raid are looking to be extremely strong for PvP. Clearing as much of this raid as you can will greatly benefit you in terms of getting that edge in the new PvP season. With the addition of the new legendary cloak, the Shroud of Resolve, the higher level you progress it to allows you to have a higher resistance to corruption. To level your cloak, you're required to do horrific visions. These are not so much weekly, but more so whenever you have a Vessel of Horrific Visions, which is the key allowing you to enter. Progress through the Horrific Vision, kill Frau, and at the end you will be rewarded with an item to upgrade your cloak to the next rank. These visions not only upgrade your cloak, but also give you a chance at Corrupted Gear up to 470 eye level. Next up is the Black Empire Zone Assault, located again in either Oldham or Vale of Eternal Blossoms. Completing the Black Empire Assault rewards a Vessel of Horrific Visions and around 1500 reputation with the Zone's faction, 750 artifact power and 120 corrupted mementos, and on top of that a piece of gear with a high chance of being corrupted. Everything you do inside of the Zone will fill up your Assault completion bar. On top of that there is also lesser assaults in the Secondary Zone, so again either Oldham or Vale. This is bi-weekly and resets at normal reset day and then on Friday at 10pm, rewarding some AP 
reputation, mementos, and another chance at corrupted gear. On top of the daily and weekly checklist, there is also some events you can do when they're available. When your faction is contesting a warfront, you're able to turn in free daily quests in your faction's hub. So, Dazara Law for Horde and Boralus for the Alliance. These daily quests require you to contribute certain items in return for 500 AP. So, well worth doing when your faction is contesting the warfront. 8.3 also brings the release of the Heroic Battle for Darkshore. When available for your faction, you can fight to control the warfront rewarding a large amount of AP once again and a guaranteed 460 eye level item. Okay then guys, that's going to be it for our 8.3 daily and weekly checklist of things you need to do in order to stay ahead. Now, you can obviously go above this and do even more, such as killing rares, doing all daily quests and so on. However, this is just what we recommend for you in order to stay ahead in the new season. Thanks for watching and be sure to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it.